Hey guys, it's Saria. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another ear tutorial, but it is inspired by both Tangled and Bridgerton. If you guys are fans of Bridgerton, then you know that part one of season three already came out, but part two is coming out this week. So I thought it'd be really fun to do a set of ears kind of inspired by my favorite princess as well as one of my favorite TV shows. If you guys are not Bridgerton fans, you definitely can still watch this tutorial because it is the first time that I've incorporated like a real tiara into the ears. So no matter who your favorite princess is, you definitely can get the techniques down for creating a similar set of ears. And without further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. So starting off with fabrics, I'm gonna be using this shiny satin-like purple fabric for one of the layers on the ear. And I'm not going to trace the cutting line template. I'm actually just going to cut around the cutting line template and give myself a good bit of excess. Um, you wanna give yourself about half an inch of excess around the template. So if you want to trace it, just trace it really wide and then cut it out, especially if you only have scissors and you don't have one of these little rotary blades. Um, but the reason you're gonna to wanna to do this if you pick a satiny fabric is because this type of fabric has no give, no pull, no stretch. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to give yourself just a little bit of excess so that you don't accidentally pull on it and cause it to fray. Um, so I'm gonna be cutting four of these out and then setting those aside and moving on to our next fabric, which is this gorgeous sheer fabric. It has these 3D um, applique flowers along with this gorgeous sequin design on it. Both of these fabrics are from Joann's um, and I'm gonna be doing the same kind of cutting out method with these as well. So I'm kind of cutting out a square that fits the ear and then I'm just loosely cutting an ear-like shape around it because I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of fabric to work with. I also tried to look at the placement of the flowers when it came to cutting out the ear because I wanted to include as many flowers as I could. So if there was a spot that had less flowers, I tried to kind of work around that. Then I'm going to cut out four uh, cardboard ears using the foam and batting template, which is the smallest template. All of these templates are linked down below for you guys, but I'm gonna trace four of those onto cardboard and then cut these out as well. The final type of ear that you're gonna cut out is a felt ear. This felt is actually from the Dollar Tree and you do get a good bit, but it is very, very thin. So I don't normally pick up this type of felt, but I was in a pinch. And because we're doing so many other layers of fabric, this is fine. So going back to that ear cutting line template, the same one that we used on the purple fabric and the flower fabric, I'm gonna be cutting four of these on the felt as well. I am over cutting these a bit, but it wasn't necessary. I'm just trying to hurry. So I was skipping the step of actually tracing the template and just using my rotary blade to cut these out. By the way, if you're interested in one of these little teeny tiny rotary blades, they do sell these at Dollar Tree along with a little cutting mat, so perfect for ear making. Next, we're gonna start assembling the ear. So putting the cardboard on top of the felt, I'm going to do a thin line of hot glue at the top of the cardboard and then fold over my felt and tap it down onto the glue. And then I'm gonna continue my glue down the sides and attach that felt to the cardboard. I usually leave the bottom for last. The next layer is going to be that uh, satin purple fabric and we're going to place the felt ear on top of that and same method of a thin line of hot glue and then just fold over your satiny fabric and tap it down into the glue. Sorry for the state of my nails in this video. I got them off like two days later but I had to get this video filmed. <laughs> um, and then I'm just gonna continue my way down the sides, saving the bottom for last. The good news about these ears is that because we're gonna do one more layer of fabric, if you get any kind of odd puckers or wrinkles, the flowery fabric should cover that up. Um, but I am gonna be closing up the bottom now, doing a dot of hot glue, and then I like to snip the, the bottom portion in half so that I can fold it over in two separate flaps. That will limit the amount of wrinkling and puckering that you'll see in this type of fabric. And then this little, um, stick I'm using is so useful. It's actually from the beauty section at Dollar Tree and it's to apply face masks on with, but it's made of silicone. So you can actually use it to like push hot glue down. It's fantastic. 
Next we're moving on to attaching the final layer of fabric on this ear and I'm going to trim it a little bit because I definitely did pick, cut these a little bit big. Um, but same method as before, I am going to be adding on this little finger silicone cover also from Dollar Tree. This video is not sponsored, I just love Dollar Tree. And I'm going to be folding over my fabric and tapping it down into the hot glue. With this fabric being made of like tulle, you definitely need something to push the fabric down into the hot, the hot glue so you don't burn yourself. Um, so either check the beauty section for that little mask application stick or pick up these little finger covers or both. Um, but following the same methods as before, we're going to start in the center and then work our way down the sides. And then when you get to the bottom section, just cut that bottom section in half and then fold over the flaps into the hot glue. Then you're gonna repeat all of those steps to create four separate halves of ears. Once you've completed the halves, then we're gonna attach these to each other. I did go in and trim off the flowers that were kind of sticking out the back if that makes sense so like I glued them down but if I glued these two halves together there'd be this weird flower sandwiched between them so I trimmed those down and then I'm going to be adding hot glue to the center portion of the ear and then I'm going to firmly press down the other half onto it and allow that glue to fully set and dry for the trim on my ears, I'm going with this gold trim that kind of reminds me of her hair when it's braided. That was my logic. But I love the gold, you know, jewelry type of looking aspect for them being Bridgerton vibes. So to add this trim, I'm just going to add some hot glue into the crevice of the two halves. And then again, using that little poking tool, this thing is so useful. I'm just going to tap it down into the hot glue and allow the hot glue to dry before I move on because you don't want the trim to start to peel off and create like hot glue strings as you're working. If you've never done ears before, I would suggest working in smaller sections and not doing a bunch of hot glue at once just because it might cause you to have to rush what you're doing um, and you definitely wanna be able to take your time. The last thing I'm gonna do is take a lighter and just kind of sear the edges of the trim. This stops it from fraying or from coming apart um, and just lightly wave the lighter over it. Obviously be super, super careful. Don't catch something on fire. <laughs> I also decided to add some pearl embellishments. So I have these teeny tiny pearls. I'll link, I will link these for you guys as well. Um, you get so many and they actually come in a two pack of different kinds. Um, and I'm just using a dot of hot glue in this little uh, rhinestone pickup tool that came with my Silhouette Cameo machine. Um, to add the pearls to the center of the flowers. And then I'm also gonna add some random ones just throughout. I just thought this gave it a lot, a little bit more excess in the design, um, which is very Bridgerton, Bridgerton costume feel. Um, I thought about adding actual rhinestones, but the rhinestones that I have just looked a little cheapy. Um, but I think if you got like some Swar Swar I can't say this word, Swarovski crystals, <laughs> that would also look really fancy and nice. Next, we're gonna be working on the tiara. So I picked up this Rapunzel replica tiara off of Amazon for, ready for it, five bucks. You guys, this was $5. And actually, when I went back and looked today, it was $4. So the price can definitely fluctuate, but I would, um, I'll leave a link for you guys down below, but definitely look for like the best priced one. Um, so we're gonna start by cutting off the sides of the tiara. This was so easy. I just used these snipper um, pliers that I have on hand, and I just kind of, snipped at it a little bit and then was able to bend off the side. Now you do need to flatten the tiara out a little bit because it is a little bit too curved for the headband. Um, do this slowly and just be really gentle with it. I didn't have any problems. I didn't lose any jewels or anything like that, but just work to kind of bend the tiara and flatten it out. Okay, and then my idea for attaching the tiara came from how I made my Infinity Stone Avengers ears. And if you guys missed that tutorial, I'll link that as well. Um, but I'm going to be using this gold, really thin headband. I believe I got this in a multiple pack of these from Temu, I wanna say. Um, but they do sell them on Amazon as well. But I just used the gold because I liked that it matched the tiara. And then I'm using zip ties to attach the tiara to the headband. Um, now you might be like, Saria, you literally cut this tiara off of a headband. Why are you adding one back on? Um, so I need the tiara and the headband to like stick straight up as opposed to being like a crown that sits back on your head. So um, this was a little tricky. It was easy to do. It was just, you have to like, I don't know, take your time with it and not rush because you want to get the placement right. Um, once I had the tiara where I thought it looked best, I did tighten those zip ties and then cut off the tails of the zip tie. I will tell you guys though, you're still able to kind of move the tiara a teeny bit to the left or right. So even if you zip tie it down and you're like, oh no, it's a little off center, you should be able to adjust it from there. Um, but I'm just using my 
ears occasionally just to check how it's landing on the headband. And then once I have that all correctly zip tied, then I'm gonna cut off the tails. Now, another oddly specific factor is if you look at the zip ties here, they're facing uh, downward and I need them to face outward, if that makes sense. So using some needle nose pliers, I'm just adjusting where the head of that zip tie is so that I can use it as an additional means of support for the tiara. Um, so it's kind of sitting on top of the black headband to sturdy the tiara just a bit more. You might be able to move it with your hand, but I did have to use needle nose plier to adjust it. Now I did decide to cover the headband this time. And if you guys watch my channel, you know I rarely do that just because I hate it so much. Um, but this time it actually worked out pretty well. So to get the right sizing of fabric, I roll the headband across the fabric from start to finish. And then I roll it back to its center point to get the widest point of the headband. And then I try to taper it downward like the headband is shaped. Um, then I'm going to fold it over itself and trace what I've kind of cut, if that makes sense. Um, you're not trying to get this exact. You definitely want to give yourself a little bit of excess and something to work with. Um, and then we're going to start gluing this onto the headband. A trick I learned from my friend Meg over at Mickey's Magic is that if you get this double-sided stick tape from Dollar Tree in their craft section, um, you can actually stick this onto your headband and then peel off the paper so that it also has a sticky top side. Um, and that will help you keep the fabric in place while you're working. This is like a game changer for covering headbands to me. It makes it so, so, so much easier. Um, so now you can see I've got the tape attached and I'm going to roll my headband across my fabric. And this will provide just an initial point of contact where I'm not having to hold the fabric in place while I'm trying to glue. Um, I'm going to start on one end and I'm going to fold over the end. And then to help with the sturdiness of the fabric, I'm going to flip it over and also glue down the other end onto the headband. So now it's glued down on both of the tips of the headband as well as having that double-sided tape to secure it. Um, I am taking my scissors and tapering the edge so that it has a little bit more similar of a shape to that headband. And then working on one side at a time, I'm going to do a line of hot glue and then gently fold over my fabric and tap it down into the hot glue. And then I will continue working in small segments, adding thin lines of hot glue, folding over my fabric and tapping it down. A few of you guys have suggested this to me, which is to snip little um, cuts in the fabric and fold it over one flap at a time that that would help with like puckering and wrinkling. I don't know that I noticed a whole lot of difference other than the fact that it might be a little easier to work knowing that you're doing a little segment at, the, at a time. Um, but I still saw some wrinkles in my fabric. Luckily, we're going to be covering this with that flowery sequin fabric. So any wrinkles or punk puckers will be hidden. So I'm just gonna continue gluing all the way down this side and then I'm gonna work on the other side doing exactly the same steps. Now, because I have so much fabric, I'm actually gonna use a different purple floral lacy fabric that I had on hand. I bought these for Isabella ears, but I didn't end up using it when I made Isabella ears. Um, so I just had this sitting in my stash and I'm gonna use this instead, but you can totally just use the same floral decorative fabric that we used on the ears. Um, the only reason I chose to use this one instead is because I liked that it didn't have 3D flowers on it, so I knew they wouldn't get in the way of the ears. Um, but it, it's really unnecessary to buy another fabric. Um, so I'm tracing this out the same way that I did before, just getting kind of a general shape of the headband. And then I'm gonna start by hot gluing it onto the end of the headband first, rolling it across, then gluing down the other end. Um, I'm not gonna use the double-sided stick tape because with this sheer fabric, you would see the double-sided stick tape. And also, I feel like your hair would get stuck in the tape. So um, I did not do that for this lacy layer. And then I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before, working one side at a time, add thin lines of hot glue, and then fold over my lacy fabric and tap it down into the hot glue. Once again, those little silicone finger covers come in real handy. 
and this is what the headband looked like all nice and covered. I'm not going to add anything to the inside of the headband. I don't like how that feels on my head. <laughs> um, and then to cover up the white color of those zip ties, I'm just taking some gold metallic paint and just dotting that onto the zip tie. It's not perfect and it definitely doesn't, it's very sheer. Like this paint is super, super sheer. So if you want a perfect coverage, I would honestly maybe suggest using like gold nail polish might work better. And then once that's dry, we're going to start assembling these ears. Um, so I have this ear spacing template linked down below for you guys. Um, and I'm just lining up the ears first. And then once I have those in the right place, I'm going to add some hot glue to the bottom of the ear and then firmly press that down onto the headband and make sure that I hold it in place at least 30 seconds and allow that glue to fully set and dry. And I'm pretty um, firm with like holding the ear onto the headband because I want to make sure that it adheres really, really nicely. And then once that is nice and set, I'm going to move on to the other ear and do the exact same thing. And then next we're going to attach the headband with the tiara on it. <laughs> so lining up my headband and just making sure it's nice and centered. Um, the gold headband will go down the sides of the purple headband. Um, if your ends of your headband stick out like mine do, you can always take a pair of needle nose pliers and just kind of bend the wire on the end to flatten it out or make it match the shape of the normal headband a little bit better. Um, you also might be able to do it with your hands depending on the, the stiffness of your headband. Um, so I'm just adding this and I am stretching the headband out and checking it because I want to make sure that the tiara is not going to get compromised as you expand the headband to put it on your head. To cover up the gold headband, I'm going to be using this purple satin ribbon. I am going to burn the edges of it with a lighter just to make sure it doesn't fray. And then you're going to need a combination of hot glue and E6000 or a really strong super glue to attach this headband to the other headband. Um, so I'm going to start with hot glue just to keep that gold headband kind of in place and then I'm going to add E6000 to really reinforce it. So that hot glue is going to provide a nice immediate hold and then the E6000 is going to provide a better long term hold. And then I'm going to take that purple satin ribbon and press it down into that same glue that I just put directly on the headband and then I'm going to start to wrap it around really tightly and press it down into hot glue as I'm wrapping it. So each time I wrap it, I add a little dot of hot glue and then I continue wrapping it. Um, I wanna say about two and a half inches up the headband. Um, and then I'm gonna cut off the excess, burn the edge just like I did before and add hot glue to that as well and firmly press that down into the headband. This holds really, really well. So you're essentially using ribbon, E6000 and hot glue to attach these two headbands to each other. Now we're not going to leave it there because I do want to make sure this looks nice and finished. So going back to that lacy fabric that I covered the purple headband with, um, I'm going to add that around the ribbon portion as well just to give it a nice finished look. Um, I'm just going to attach this with hot glue. So it does add another layer of reinforcement, but it also makes it way more aesthetically pleasing when you look at the headband. So I'm just doing a thin line of hot glue and then wrapping a little square of that lacy fabric around the headband and tapping it down into another line of hot glue. This is yet another time where that little silicone stick comes in handy. The final thing that I decided to add to these ears is this little tiny Pascal toy. My daughters have so many little Pascals in their toys. I knew that they wouldn't notice if I took one. Um, so I am going to be attaching this to the back of the headband. I just love that I have a little Pascal on these ears. I think it's adorable. And this definitely isn't like a necessity and probably is a little bit less Bridgerton-y to have a chameleon on the back of the headband. But he is glittery. He's a glittery Pascal. So I stand by my decision. And that is it. That is the final step in creating these Bridgerton Rapunzel mashup Disney ears. You guys are going to have to let me know what you think of these because even if you don't love Bridgerton, these ears are so beautiful and I kind of want to create more Disney princess ears with tiaras. So you guys let me know in the comments what princess would you like to see with their tiara.